Welcome to the future of Mini's in-car experience. This is Mini OS 9 and the Samsung circular display that powers it. While it looks more complex than before, it's substantially more powerful. And if you can master it, it's really quite simple. In this video, we're going to go through 14 key pieces of functionality in Mini OS 9 that will make you an expert in just 15 minutes. So when you first turn on the car in a new Mini Cooper, Mini Countryman, you're greeted with this screen. Now I have CarPlay also enabled in this car. Android Auto is also available. It's wireless and both are fantastic. Um, but what Mini's wanting you to use, of course, is the system itself. And I have to say, it's generally very, very good. In fact, a lot of times, and let's go ahead and click into navigation, you will look at a OEM's navigation, a, a Mini or a BMW, Audi, you know, what have you, and, and immediately want to use CarPlay or Android Auto because it's so much better. That's not necessarily the case. And what's fascinating with this, with this system is it's really built on modern tech. And it is built in a way that leverages a lot of things like traffic data, as well as point of interest data. So while it's not as pinpoint as Google Maps, it's pretty, pretty close, um, close to Apple Maps too. And so, you know, what you get in this scenario, and it's fantastic, of course, is use of the full screen. And if you go to Apple, and in this case, Apple Maps, we'll just go here, you see with CarPlay, Apple has yet to allow for the full usage of the screen. Now they do let it sort of bleed out. So if we go into settings and we change wallpaper, you'll see immediately that it sort of comes out to the edges of the screen itself. Kind of a new, you know, interesting trick if, if that's what you like. Um, call me boring, I always go black. It just kind of sort of blends in when you actually get into the OS itself. But we're not here to necessarily talk about CarPlay. I want to talk about Mini OS 9 a little bit. And at this point, which is the main screen, consider this, you know, the sort of opening screen of, of Mini OS 9, this allows you to scroll left, right. So here you'll see my screen. I'm sorry, my phone that's paired. Yes, it's G phone. I find that hilarious continuously. Um, you go maps, you go uh, current media plane. This is through CarPlay. You've got Mini, we'll get to this in a second. Um, I'm not gonna say the name, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, weather, some info on the actual sort of data on the car. Um, this is a, uh, a look at sort of the surroundings of the car and this sort of supports parking situations like that. And of course, a clock, which I don't know who throws that on there, but there it is. So, okay, all great. Let's actually talk about this. And so we've we've seen the uh, spike um, imagery where people uh, use it as sort of a, a, a version of um, <clears throat> the uh, you know Siri or uh, Android Auto's uh, you know sort of companion. But here it's a little different. And so to to start this, I simply say, "Hey, Mini, tell me a joke." Did you hear about the Minis who got married? No. They had a two-tied wedding cake. Okay, that's great. Or not. But you get the point here. Um, let's try another. Hey, Minnie, can you tell me how to get to downtown Chicago? So one of the things I wanted to do there is follow it up with a quick response. And you'll see right away, uh, it didn't hear it. And so where Siri and other, uh, you know, sort of, uh, AI companions, if you will, have gotten much, much better about prompts. Mini isn't quite there. It's not bad though. So let's try again and get more specific. Hey, Mini, can you take me to the Merchandise Mart in Chicago? Would you like directions to the Merchandise Mart Plaza on 222? So I have found it to be very good. Um, now responsiveness, you saw I just clicked it. It didn't click. I've noticed I've had to click it again sometimes. Um, and you'll see immediately, okay, great. So I've got a couple different scenarios here in terms of getting there, which is cool. Um, it feels a lot like, you know, Google Maps. Um, you've got, of course, some things that you can turn on or off, which is really helpful. We're going to go backwards. Um, we can also say things like this. Hey, Minnie, can you turn my heated seat on? In which seat should I activate the seat heating? The passenger. Seat heating activated for the passenger. So what's cool about that is there are legitimately a lot of functions that sit behind the screen 
And in this case, it's easy for me to click that on or off. Um, but it just saves time, especially when you're driving, you know, think about it. I think a lot of folks aren't used to relying on this type of interaction. And quite frankly, you know, voice activated interactions have been terrible in cars for, for a very long time. But I'm here to say they're pretty good uh, in the new Mini. And, and I would actually urge anybody who gets in these cars to give them a shot because they are, from my experience, uh, really, really functional, um, which is fantastic to say. All right, so we looked at the navigation. We took a look at just actually briefly um, the heating and cooling controls generally you shouldn't touch this very often. I mean, you know, you set it to, you set it to whatever you want. It just does its thing. This is how you operate the dual climate control. I think this needs to be better. Um, I would love to be able to just click and drag. Uh, you can't do that right now. So it's a click and then a drag, uh, and the specificity eh, it's okay. Could be better. Um, and of course, as you can see here, you click once and you turn on the various things around heating, steering wheel, seats, etc. Um, so it's not bad. I, I personally think there are a couple elements here, functionalities that should be physical buttons. I think that's one of them. Uh, but you let me know in the comments what you think. I imagine a few of you will agree. So let's go back to home really quick. So we took a look at that. We took a look at navigation. You know, we, of course, took a look at CarPlay. Let's take a look at the apps themselves. There's a lot here. And, and quite frankly, a lot of it is overwhelming. You'll notice a couple colors or sort of this interesting color right here. This is actually part of Mini Connected. Um, it is a add-on feature that you pay for monthly. And so what's interesting about this, and it's going to load slowly, it's the cell connection, it's not the Mini, is that, you know, listen, there's a lot here that isn't necessarily the most, uh, how do we say, like usable from a daily perspective. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of games, um, a lot of different apps, etc. And it's kind of interesting. So I can actually download these apps. It gives me the ability to have access to all of this. Um, but Mini Connected also gives you a chance to use Driving Assistant Plus, uh, which is helpful. Um, that should be standard when you buy it from the car. It's the Mini Connected Plus and some of those elements that actually give you a little bit more. So for instance, additional apps, air console, so you can play games in the car, the intelligent personal assistant, which we just looked at, that actually is part of Mini Connected. Um, the doors and windows sort of unlocking and opening in certain areas, Mini Maps extended as well, and video streaming. So, you know, this is actually going to expire, as you can see here in a couple months, Mini Connected Plus. It's an interesting move for them, and you can see what this is. Um, I would recommend trying it because I do think that there's a little bit of uh, uh, legitimate um, functionality that is that is interesting here. Um, so that's Mini Connected Plus. You've got, of course, apps uh, within the App Store. You can get into specific, uh, and you can see here, we can add all of these if we want. And you can play these apps directly in the car. Now, the one thing that's missing for me is Apple Music. And it's interesting because I, I, I know Porsche, for instance, has Apple Music integration. Um, we see here Spotify. Uh, so this needs to be rounded out a little bit more, but it's interesting to see where Mini has gone with this. Um, entertainment, music, it, it, it's cool. And I, again, Mini Connected Plus, it's worth trying at the very least. So now let's get back to this. So you can take a look at all of these apps and you can actually sort them by infotainment, vehicle, recently used, Mini Connected. So let's go vehicle. These are these are apps that are associated with the vehicle itself. And so here we have things like displays, which we can, of course, cockpit brightness, heads up, interaction unit, things like this. We can change all those settings. Assisted view, <clears throat> which we looked at earlier. There's a shortcut on the, the home screen. Data privacy, drive recorder, um, experiences. And I think has not been turned on yet, as you can see. Um, this is kind of interesting because, of course, you can actually take a look at what's going on from your Mini remotely. Very, very cool stuff. Um, drive settings is a big one. So this is driver assistance. So anybody wants to sort of play with the various elements of driver assistance, uh, speed limit assist. In Europe, this is incredibly helpful um, because you can sort of set 
your car directly to the speed limit. And you can in fact specify, you know, how much you want to be above the speed limit when you hit set as well, which is fantastic. Um, I know, at least for me in the US, I don't use it. Maybe I, maybe I should more often. Um, speed limit exceeded, you could have a warning. In Europe, of course, there's that awful chime that is mandated by law, um, which of course you can turn off, but it is very annoying. Uh, route speed control at Ashley. Uh, you can define how fast you want to go around corners when you're in uh, sort of that semi-autonomous mode. Distance control. I hate that this is buried in here. I wish this is still a button on the steering wheel, but you can define how close you follow vehicles and so on and forth or so on and so forth. We have assisted uh, view, which we took a look at earlier. So a lot here, which is fantastic. Um, this as well. So uh, you can turn off the mini sound, which is great. Um, the auto hold is also really nice. Um, drive off support. This is actually for snow. Automatic hold is on. That's actually set elsewhere. Um, let's take a look at experiences briefly. So we can take a look at there's only one option. You need to turn off experience jingle to maintain sanity. So you can change the settings of go-kart mode, for instance. So let's say we want steering behavior to actually be a little bit, uh, you know, more comfortable, if you will. Um, it's simply a lighter steering, not a big deal. Um, but you can change some things, which is nice. I mean, you know, here, uh, you know, I can, I can make it DSC off all the time. I'm sure I have to sign a waiver for that, but you get the idea. Again, um, experience jingle needs to be off uh, because it is a horrible sound. Now, what's interesting here is you can actually set your experience when you start the car in any one of the experiences except for go-kart. I assume that has to do with emissions because who knows, but there you are. So there's a lot of different experiences. We've gone through this quite a bit. Timeless is pretty cool. Let's stick with this for a split second here. So exterior lighting, you can actually as we've seen before, change the design of, here we are, so this is classic, this is favored, and this is John Cooper Works. Notice the difference? Um, so John Cooper Works is, well, I guess call it more aggressive, I suppose. So this is a JCW trim. Let's keep it here, why not? So th there's a lot of these things, including auto on off, all those things that are now in this. Um, but in case of lights, you do have redundancy on the stock over here. You can also uh, use that. So physical buttons aren't completely gone. Interior lighting, uh, disco mode is gone, which is a bummer. Um, let's go to ambient lighting. So you can, of course, change some of these things, reduce for driving, cockpit brightness, reading lamp. Um, personal mode does allow you to kind of get funky there, but the disco mode of continuously changing is gone entirely. Now, I want to talk a little bit about shortcuts because this brings up a good point. We look at seat comfort and massage is right here and massage is buried. So let's, let's go back and just for my sanity and maybe yours, let's just go to core mode. So we maintain that look. So as I get in the car and start it, one of the things I want to do is turn on my massaging mode. Now, if I go to lumbar support, I actually click up and I get this. So little pro tip, lumbar support, if I click up, I can have massaging seats straight away and I can hit start. Okay, that's kind of cool and that's relatively new. However, you can also set that as a shortcut. And so here you can see the shortcuts I've set, uh, seat massage, climate control, navigation, things that I want to get to quick, quickly. Now you may ask, why do I have navigation on here? It's a button. When you have your car play on, and, and anytime you're in the car, of course, your car uh, registers your phone and starts car play, you actually can't turn on navigation unless you click the button. Um, the default, or if I even ask Mini to send me somewhere, it will choose my default app in CarPlay. So I had to actually create a shortcut for the built-in nav, which I, I kind of prefer in a lot of ways, um, so I can click it right there. So you can see some of the other things I've, I've I've added, uh, you know, and, and to add things to, sh to, to um, shortcuts, you simply click and hold. It's already added, but there you would see it. Let's, for some reason, anybody wants data privacy added to shortcuts. You just click add to shortcuts, and there we go. You click and hold to do delete, just like you would expect. So shortcuts is an awesome way to really personalize this experience. Like, there's no question this is a little more complex. There's more here to, to, to edit 
and and sort of you know make your own but once you start to understand the user experience and really get behind kind of the ui it starts to make a ton of sense you also have the search function here so if you need to actually get into very specific areas that you're not sure where they lie you can simply search so that is a really quick look at mini os 9 as you can see it is also much quicker than we've seen in the past uh, i have driven a lot of these cars and I'll be very honest, they've been a little buggy. Um, it felt like beta software until now. This is the first time I have spent, gosh, it's been about 600 miles in a car, seven days, and I have not had one bug. I've not had what I would call one lag. It has been incredibly smooth and, and quite honestly, very seamless in day-to-day -day use. As you can see, Mini OS 9 has become really a refined version of where it was about six months ago. And it's become a selling point for this car. This circular display is almost shocking to people when they first see it. And the fact that it is smooth and, and really refined, responsive, loaded with functionality, it really becomes a, a hallmark of what this car can do. Now, is it more complex than, than before? Yes, it absolutely is. But once you get the hang of it, once you sort of understand the UI and UX behind it all, it becomes pretty easy. And eventually, in my experience, it really becomes almost transparent to your driving experience, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to focus on this. You want to focus on this. And so far, that's been my experience in this latest Mini Cooper with Mini OS 9. As always, give us a like if you like this video and subscribe. We've got a lot more content coming.